Right, time for another Frank Addington movie review. This one is the 1982 film Against All Hope. A man struggling with alcoholism turns to a reverend for last minute, last ditch help to save his fledging life. This is a Christian film by Edward T. McDougall, and this is his debut film. His follow up was the there it is. His follow-up was the 1984 film Never Ashamed, which I have. It's pretty good, but it's not one of my favorite Christian films. It's the one with the Scott Bio-looking guy in there. He had another one in 1987 called Gold Through the Fire, which i kind of been meaning to watch. And then 1990, there was one called Geronimo. Kind of similar line. Never seen that. 1993 film he did was called The First Stone, and that's that's a good one. I need to I've watched that once, and it was surprisingly good for early 90s. But uh, I'll have to go through that again, and see if it was just as good as I remember it. So, Against All Hope has a has a wrap around formula. So it starts with a man named uh, Cecil Mo, who is is kicked out of his house by his wife or pick, kicked out of his apartment by his wife. He goes to his friend's house, and he calls up a... He looks through a, a yellow pages to find a reverend. Got one! <laughs> he calls him right up. The days of the yellow pages. And call, it's the middle of the night. The guy's in, The reverend is in bed with his wife asleep, and he takes the call. And Cecil Moe tells the reverend, I'm an I'm an alcoholic and I'm thinking about killing myself, but I'm afraid to die. You know you know where I live, so he <laughs> I can find it. So he goes to the to the guy's house. Okay, this is this is the beginning scene. Then you have him you have him at the reverend's house, comes down to the living room, says, "Tell me you start from the beginning of, of your your of how this all started." So then you have the big meat sequence. Of, of, or the big meat part of the film uh, that just kind of goes through his life beginning at the age of 13 up until the point where he was was uh, kicked out of his house. And then at the end, you go back to the reverend's house. So the meat of the film starts when he's, he's telling it. You don't get a narration. Uh, well, you do get a little bit of narrating in this, but it's mostly acting. So there's a... So you get a young Cecil Mo. So it goes back to when he's 13, and this is roughly, if you do the math, around the 19, the late 1930s. And he kind of lives in this like farm type of area. And his mother, it shows his mother has some kind of a nondescript uh, problem where she has a stroke or something when he comes home from school one day. And it's very like crippling to her she doesn't have much time to live so they, they don't really go into detail about what happened to her but um they the uh she dies and then the housekeeper woman who's been helping out ends up marrying cecil's father and she's very ab abusive uh she like throws him into the basement and she's verbally abusive to him and he ends up, uh, he ends up like running away, and they don't do much on that. But he runs away and like helps out on someone else's farm to make some money. He ends up in the navy, and so this is like World War II period, and he's in his little navy suit. And during this time, it's like sometime during this time, he he meets his his wife, and they I think they get married while he's in the navy. And he calls up his father, but his stepmother is being abusive to his father physically and verbally. And the, the actor who plays his father is hilarious in this. He's never acted anything else, but the, just the way he answers the phone. Oh, hey, Cecil, good to hear from you. Like, <laughs> trying to make the most of his two lines in the film. But... He ends up never, he doesn't get to see his father again because she's abusive. And then 
we kind of get the feeling that she drives into his grave, kind of, but maybe he has some kind of illness. But it's right after that that he kind of has his, that he begins drinking, because he hadn't drank before, but he, he, uh, he has his first drink, and then most of the film after that follows his, like, having the ups and downs through his drinking problem, uh, all these different things, like, um, he, um, he, you know, he, lo he loses his job, he, uh, uh, come, you know, he goes, he gets sober for a while, I think it was maybe the, maybe even a year, or several months, and then he gets drunk the night of his celebration for his sobriety, that his family throws him a celebration, uh, he pawns off money because his kid is sick, he's supposed to pawn it for, for medicine, but he, but he goes to the bar instead, he, he sells his wife's car to, to pay off his bar tab, but, after this, it ends up back at the Reverend's house as um, the Reverend, uh, the Reverend, um, you know, talks to him and asks him if he wants to give his life to Christ. And that's kind of where it, that's kind of where it uh, comes to its conclusion. But then there's a little bit more after that where they show kind of the aftermath of it, where he is, where he tells his family about what happened and he cha completely changes his life they move out of the, the kind of the, the slum area and they uh, move, move into a better part of the town uh, they start going to church but his wife is still he's trying to he's trying to get his wife to change too because she's not like completely converted but that's kind of how the the movie ends but so the actors in this film you have uh, you've got Michael Madsen plays um, plays Cecil Mo, and this is a kind of kind of an interesting d debut because we know him from uh, Reservoir Dogs and uh, Kill Bill, Donnie Brasco. He was in Thelma and Louise before that, but mostly like kind of bad guy characters. And this one is just just a strange debut for him, and he's not really. It sounds like he's a bad guy, but he's actually like a, a pretty a, a decent guy in this, it, like in his heart, because he's like he even like helps this homeless guy, like brings him into this little uh, diner place and get to buy him some soup and stuff. So he's not really a bad guy; he just made you know bad decisions. So it's not the like the typical Michael Madsen characters that he um, that he was kind of like more typecast in in his uh in his heyday but it's uh nothing really stands out about his acting you, you don't get the feeling like oh this is this guy's going to be something <laughs> something huge you know but one thing it does stand out like he in, in this film like he is a incredibly good looking dude like i never knew like like in this year i mean he just he just looked like strikingly good in that 1983 the year after he was in the great film war games not a huge not a huge role in it but at the very beginning in the silo when they're wanting to turn the missiles he's in that that opening scene and you you get a little better feel of his future uh acting skills like in that film more than you do in this one this is very low budget very <laughs> uh which i liked but uh just um you just don't get the feeling like he's going to turn into like a great actor <laughs> in this film but the rest of the cast is nobody else in this film basically was in anything. This is like a one-shot acting opportunity for like every single actor almost in this film. I'll just name a couple of the people. So you have uh, his wife, Jean Mo, And I love the way Michael, Michael Madsen says her name. They're like, Jean, <laughs> the, the film. Uh, Maureen McCarthy is the name of the of the actress this is her only film and she does a really good job in this she's a very convincing wife who's trying to you know say you know deal with her husband's problems and she's pretty good she showed some promise as an actress it's strange she never got another another uh opportunity but let me see if there's a there might be a picture of his family in there um 
another picture. So the, the Reverend Tom, that do, he goes to his house, is played by um, Cecil Moe. Is the, the guy's real name, the guy who plays the Reverend. He's kind of an older gentleman. Uh, th and yes, this, this movie was based on a true story, so it was about the Reverend, it was about Cecil Moe, who was in the film, and he never, he's never in any other movie. So you get, so I think, um, just from his lines, it, it seems like Cecil Moe in real life, maybe like convert, like turn into a pastor or something, but kind of interesting to have him in the film, like as the Reverend, like seeing his life story played by uh, Michael, Michael Madsen. The only other notable person in this is the Bible church pastor. That's what he's credited as the Bible church pastor, which is the church that Michael Madsen and his family go to after his conversion. They show a little, a little scene in the church and it's David Gotas is the, is the pastor. And he was in a couple other films. One of them is Ordinary Guy from 1979, another low budget Christian film where he plays pretty much the exact same character. And he is a perfect like old kind of old school older uh just you know preacher guy like he just should have been in more of these kind of films because he plays the role just spot on david gotas rest in peace uh, so what this is one of my favorite christian films um I, I love the look of it i love the the you know just the grainy quality the low budget i like the i like the little places where they live like the little apartment the um and the the house where they lived uh the it's kind of in the slum kind of the the neighborhood is, is has a cool look to it something about it like the uh, the little diner that he goes into this is kind of at the kind of at the beginning of his drinking problems he, when he takes the well this is when he leaves his face his, he gets up from dinner one night and says hey, i'm going to get a square meal and he goes to like I think it's a little diner because there's some kind of older woman in there and then who's working the table and he gets soup and he spills the soup. And then this old lady who's a customer in there is like, you stupid idiot. <laughs> like, she, uh, there's uh, this, this woman is credited. I don't know her name, but, uh, and then when he hears the, you know, hears music coming from this like revival church. It's like, where's the music coming from? Well, it sure ain't coming from here. <laughs> and then he leaves. And that's the last you see of this old lady, which is disappointing. Because, like, I wanted to see more of her. Like, she was hilarious. She was great. But that diner that he goes into almost looks like they're filming the same place where he, the same bar that he goes to a lot. Uh, there's So he goes to this mission church. That's another great scene where you have the, uh, where you have the kind of like, it's not like this Pentecostal type of, place and you have the revival pastor and then you have this little girl who sings uh, God is so good <laughs> it's just really bad but it's great and then you have this little boy who comes up and reads John three sixteen. He's very good <laughs> and then he's like you need to come up and be saved um, it's a great scene and then the Thanksgiving scene so I only watch this film like once a year but this would be a good one to add to Thanksgiving Fest, because there's a, a pretty lengthy scene about focusing on Thanksgiving Day, where his kids, who are pretty bad actors, <laughs> uh, they're about, you know, kind of like eight, ten years old, and they, you know, how was Thanksgiving? What'd you have? Uh, turkey and gravy, cranberry sauce. <laughs> it's just terrible. Uh, but he's watching, he's watching football. And we, if you do the math again, this is probably in the 50s, maybe early 50s, okay, mid, early mid 50s. You can hear the announcer on the TV mention the Packers and the Bears. Okay, so it's the Packers Bears game. This is a factual error you could submit to IMDb because the Packers and Bears never played against each other on Thanksgiving Day, even before it was Lions only. Okay, so just a little little side note there, but you can tell it's you know it's an old fifties looking TV, um, and uh, just the way his acting in this, like during the when he's he's drinking bottles of beer while watching football, <laughs> he's going yeah, like it's the worst acting for like you know like cheering on whoever. 
Um, but if you want a, if you're looking for like a, a heavy, kind of like, like gut wrenching film about a guy who's you know has these troubles with his family, and it really like gets to the to the so, to your soul, and it's like like a tearjerker. This is not it. This is not it. If you want that, go to watch the 2000, I think 14 film. I can only imagine fo focusing on the lead singer of the band Mercy Me, and you have Dennis Quaid as the abusive father who turns his life around. That one has is, is really like sticks to your gut. It's like really hard to get through that film. Uh, more, you know, more for my. That's not what I like. It's a little bit too much. It's a little bit too heavy. This had the potential to do that if it was directed and like written a certain way, but it, I mean, I don't know. If they were trying to hit that note with this film, it fell completely flat. And I'm thankful for that because I don't, I didn't want that in this, <laughs> in this film. It's more, it, uh, it's, it feels good throughout. It's just have a, has a, um, Kind of an easygoing pace, despite all the like the problems he's having. And one thing this movie does very well it it uh, portrays Cecil Moe's uh, conversion. A lot of these films they they kind of like to go for the dramatic, like the 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 really like bad and sometimes evil person might like you know has a quick complete you know conversion like a one eighty. Like overnight, blinded, you know, like, uh, like Paul on Damascus type of conversion, it, which, uh, I mean, that can happen. But this one has a, 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 it does a good job of doing the kind of a, a more realistic, uh, presenting kind of this arc of his life and how his whole life he was, he was kind of seeking, like, like um, a little bit, you know, a, as he went through his. Uh, journey of life so it was like when he was a 13 year old his mother has the is ailing and she doesn't have much they think she's going to die and, he, and he's he's praying like out in the field like please you know please don't let my mother die so you see like an early uh reference to that and then you see him talking in the bar to his friend saying uh do you believe in god do you believe in hell right and the guy's like oh man we'll talk about that i don't care <laughs> Uh, so you know you you see some questioning, and then you then he goes to the mission church. This is almost like he almost gets there because he you know he hears like the little message, like the music and stuff, and he I think he even kind of comes forward at the at the end. So he's like you can tell he's kind of you know wanting something to change his life, but like his heart is not quite you know you know uh, sold out. But he's like he's seeking through his life. He's kind of, and maybe he just needs to have some some of these pitfalls to like to finally get to the point where he is talking to this pastor in the middle of the night about you know his his life story. So it's it's a good, um, I just think it's a good way of kind of showing that kind of that journey and making it kind of a gradual conversion, which is which is a I think it's an effective way of doing it. May not have been the way they were intending to, to do it. Maybe they, it just happened by accident. But it was just something that... It's not something obvious, but it's just something that I kind of picked up after watching this film too many times. <laughs> Maybe like seven, eight times by now. So, But might add this to Thanksgiving Fest because of the Thanksgiving scene. Uh, against All Hope. Just a one that no one's ever seen. This is probably the, this is probably the first review of it on YouTube. Um, check it out if you haven't seen it. There's, you know, there's free uploads of it. But uh, Michael Madsen's debut—he's really good in this film. He's he's real. Uh, you really kind of root for him in this. So maybe my favorite film by him. <laughs> not a not a big fan of those like, you know, Kill Bill kind of stuff and the characters he played in those films. This is this is one of my top favorite like. Christian films, and it's very different from a lot of the other ones. Uh, 90 minutes long, nice and low budget, you know, good message, and a lot of, like, fun little parts. Doesn't drag much, except for maybe in the parts of his childhood, or, or can be a little slow, but they're still fun. So, 
check it out against all hope 1982 uh, that's that's my review and all right see you guys for <laughs> another one maybe soon bye